On March 23, 2021, Suez Canal was blocked for six days after a massive container ship ever given ran aground, blocking the traffic in both directions and leaving more than 100 ships stuck at each end of the canal. Vessels stuck during a sandstorm that caused low visibility, impacting the ship's navigation. The situation was tragic because Suez Canal carries roughly 10% of worldwide shipping traffic. The blockage of such an important shipping route is bound to have consequences. Each day it was closed, the Suez Canal disrupted over $9 billion worth of goods trade. A 1,300-foot, 220,000-ton container ship that has been blocking traffic in the Suez Canal for nearly a week was finally freed. Dredging efforts had removed more than 20,000 tons of sand and mud, which loosened the ship's bow. Abdallah Abdelgawid, heroic excavator operator, was working for five days, having only three to four hours of rest a day. It took 10 years to build, and was officially opened on November 17, 1869. The Suez Canal is an Egyptian sea-level waterway that provides a vital shipping route between Europe and Asia. The construction of the Suez Canal reduced the distance between India and Europe significantly. Without the Suez Canal, Indian ships would have to go around the Cape of Good Hope, southern tip of Africa and all the way up the west coast of Africa, costly and lengthy route. The distance between Mumbai and London is roughly 7,200 nautical miles using the Suez Canal and 12,300 nautical miles taking the longer route around the Cape of Good Hope. The reduced distance has led to faster transportation of Indian products saving an estimated 15 days of journey time on average. Construction began in early 1859. The excavation work took 10 years, and an estimated 1.5 million people worked on the project. Unfortunately, many of these were slave laborers, and it is believed that tens of thousands died while working on the Suez, from cholera and other causes. Officially, the first ship to navigate through the canal was the imperial yacht of French Empress Eugenie, the Lagal, followed by the British ocean liner Delta. French sculptor Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi came up with the idea of building a grand statue to celebrate the Suez Canal, and presented it to the Egyptian government and developer Ferdinand de Lesseps. The statue would depict a woman dressed in traditional Egyptian garments, wear a torch, and be titled, Egypt Bringing Light to Asia. The idea had been inspired by the Colossus of Rhodus, an enormous statue of Helios, the Greek sun god, built on the island of Rod. The idea didn't catch on, but Bartholdi continued pushing it until it was finally brought to New York, where its original name was a more encompassing, liberty enlightening the world. The Suez and the Panama Canal was designed by the same developer. After successfully finishing the Suez Canal, Ferdinand de Lesseps developed the idea of building another canal. Encouraged by his previous success, investors and governments gave their support and resources, and Lesseps recruited Gustav Eiffel, creator of the Eiffel Tower. Lesseps had promised that building the Panama Canal would be easier and quicker than the Suez. The project was initiated in 1881, 12 years after the Suez Canal was completed, but many failures occurred during the construction work, including an epidemic that resulted in thousands of deaths. Lesseps' company bankrupted in 1889, while he and Eiffel were prosecuted for conspiracy and fraud. Ever Given is not the first ship to stuck at the canal. First opened in 1869, the canal consisted of a channel barely 8 meters deep, 22 meters wide at the bottom, and 61 to 91 meters wide at the surface. In 1876 major improvements began because of many groundings of ships caused by narrowness and tortuousness of the canal. To allow ships to pass each other, Passing bays were built every 8 to 10 kilometers. Before the Evergreen ship blocked it, the Suez Canal was last closed in 1967, when war broke out between Egypt and Israel. Ships that were passing through the canal at that time were trapped for the next eight years. Vessels that would have gone via the canal were forced to take the long way round. From 1967 to 1975, 15 ships and their crews were trapped in the canal after the Six-Day War. During that time crew members from 15 trapped ships tried to manage the situation and they formed the Great Bitter Lake Association, creating their own trading systems and organizing sporting events to pass the time. Crew members continued to regularly meet on board their ships, organized social events, founded a yachting club and held the so-called Bitter Lake Olympic Games. Life boat races were arranged and soccer games were played on the largest ship, the MS Port Invercargill, 
while church services were held on the West German motorship Nordwind and movies were shown on the Bulgarian freighter Vasil Levski. The Swedish Kalara had a pool. They were nicknamed after all the Yellow Fleet because of the desert sand that covered the ships after such a long time. In 2014, the Egyptian government supervised a $8 billion expansion project that widened the Suez from 61 meters to 312 meters for a 21-mile distance. To fund the massive project, the citizens of Egypt were asked investing in it, instead of any foreign capital. In return they would receive the profits from the operation of the canal. The government hoped the new canal will double the country's trade income, as well as contribute towards 1 million new jobs in the entire Suez Canal Zone development. The project took one year to complete and, as a result, the canal can accommodate ships to pass both directions simultaneously. It takes 12 to 16 hours to a vessel to transit the Suez Canal. The 120-mile canal connects the Red Sea with the Mediterranean. One of the most important water route facilitates a significant amount of trade. 19,000 vessels, averaging to 52 a day, had sailed through its waters in 2020. In 1870, the canal's first full year of operation, there were 486 transits, or fewer than two per days. In 1966 there were 21,250, an average of 58 per days, with net tonnage increasing from some 444,000 metric tons, in 1870 to about 278,400,000 metric tons. By the mid-1980s the number of daily transits had fallen to an average of 50, but net annual tonnage was about 355,600,000 metric tons. In 2018 there were 18,174 transits with a net annual tonnage of about 1,139,630,000 metric tons. That's it for today. Let me know what you think about the Suez situation. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and like the video if you enjoyed it.